and to Sam Pokemon. On point, are we recording? 1352 Sam from Pokemon. Did he say he wanted a goods and services or friends and family? Okay. Yeah, we are recording. Oh, <laughs> 1850, 21 for attractive bubble mailer. Okay, I'm doing it. Yay. Um, I get the tracked bubble mailer on point from the Pokemon. Is that what we're going to talk about today? Drew's trying to do her best to enunciate. I talk too fast and it makes people nervous. And I don't <laughs> think it's going to be a very good podcast. Yes. If you talk at your normal speed and then we... Uh, Slow people, it down? No, people, no, people play this at double speed. You'll talk be like at tr- quadruple speed. Wow, yeah. I would talk so fast, but then my voice would also get higher in pitch. <laughs> I'd say I'm not paying for goodness or friends and family. There we go. Okay, guys. Ready. What is this? What are we doing? I really want to eat. Is that like a weird like thing to want to do uh, yes. right during a podcast? It's kind of a general faux pas to eat during like a podcast. What if I was mukbanging? Yeah, that's like, well, if that's the point, I guess. But otherwise, like you probably shouldn't be like I feel weird. in your face. Oh, well, first of all, gross. <laughs> Second of all, I feel like oddly nervous. I know that we do pod, that we do shows all the time, but. Somehow I guess it's maybe the sound of my voice. I know I'm going to hate listening to the sound of my voice. And well, even though like I will not be listening to this program, other people will. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, thankfully, like uh, the, the, I think the goal of this is to just kind of record it and just like put it out there. Like yeah. for the most part, usually, I feel like for the most part, we usually don't need editing and like the things that we say. Yeah. I mean, I feel that way about myself, but I don't know if other people feel that way about me. We know how to, I mean, we could use editing to tighten, tighten it up. Sure. Tighten but. It. Yeah. Uh, let's think of this as like a Snyder Cut type of thing. We just like wing it, just kind of make a four-hour thing. And yeah. then like, well, first then, of all, like... And we just, we just ask the audience, like, what do you think would make a better movie? Yeah, and then we ask our audience to defend us like ruthlessly across all yeah. social media platforms. Release the hashtag Video Chronic Cut. Yeah. So I think that what I could do at least is explain kind of what we're doing uh, for anyone who's actually listening to this. Uh, maybe. Maybe yeah. you're listening. Maybe it's the post-apocalypse when we've all died. <laughs> yeah. This is a very bad Twilight Zone episode about so, podcasters. So if we've heard the aliens that find this uh, in 100,000 100, years from yeah. now. Yeah. If this is the end of that AI movie, because remember how that's that's how AI ended? With them finding podcasts? Yeah. Well, sort of. Like they found the little boy and he was like a podcast, but in robot form. Oh, I see. Don't you remember the end of AI? I really don't. I saw that when it came out, okay. and I was like, I must have been like, yeah, like. So the like blue 11? fairy, the blue fairy Pin- Pinocchio shows up when yeah. he's underwater. That's Meryl Streep, like... right? No, yeah. is it? Is it Meryl Streep? Oh. That's right. It is Meryl Streep. Yeah. She does play the blue fairy. So she shows up. He's been underwater for like three hundred years or something, or like three thousand years because he can't die because it's like a horrifying concept because Kubrick was supposed to make yeah. it. Yeah. So he's been underwater dead for 3,000 or some odd years and uh, I think what the deal is is he the aliens have come so the blue fairy comes and then the aliens come and they bring his mother back to life for a day so he gets a day back to life with his mother and then the end happens but you're like wait I'm sorry was the blue fairy an alien or was she just unrelated like because, you know, like Gigolo Joe existed in that universe. He was just another robot. There was that like Teddy Ruxpin there that was Robin Williams. Yeah. But like the fairy part didn't seem to fit. It, it fits if you think about it. Anyway, so what are we doing? <laughs> we are recording uh, podcasts. I mean, this is so the idea of this is to. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to wrangle the dogs in here. Mm-hmm. Voices fading and people moving. Oh, we have to stay in one place. And things jingling. Ideally, yes, we should say in front of the mics. Let's just take their collars off. Take yeah. them. Yeah, take calls off. Um, and you, that's because we're in a, we're in a room, barren room with a bed and some boxes uh, right now. You can tell uh, so much about a person by the way they say room. Yeah, uh, yeah. but we are uh, slowly filling it out with uh, gear and more stuff because we're going to turn this into our little media center. Um, it is the room in our home that our roommate recently moved out of, and so we're trying to utilize that to make some new content. Yeah, new content today. We found. Um, a bunch of cat poop. That was that was some new content. Yeah, good. good. That's that's what we want to strive to is yeah, the cat poop. The cat poop content. Uh, yeah. we, we found a bunch of fun stuff. But look, this podcast is going to be part of a Patreon perk. I think on my channel. Yeah, which um, you might discern if you're listening to this on the Patreon. Yeah, but like this episode will be free because they always the first episode free. Oh, okay. Yeah, we should right? yeah, I guess we, we should. Be, just really... I guess we should put on our best face, <laughs> our oh, well, best voice face. So we're gonna edit this one. Uh, I, I talk think, like I this. So. I will enunciate. This is how I always talk, guys. Yeah. 
Where are the drugs going, fuckface? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be uh, podcast stuff. We've had like a few ideas for different podcasts we wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, in general, like the core concept is we want to do a podcast. We just want to like sit and talk and just chat about kind of whatever we want. Because usually there, we spend most of our nights just talking about whatever we want. Yeah. Things well, that come up. And, very rarely do we spend our nights talking about things we don't want to talk about. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> you'd be surprised. But we uh, <laughs> usually have to uh, kind of focus on what we want for like certain things when we want to like put out actual, you know, content for like viewers and subscribers yeah. stuff like that um but for this we're gonna have like a few different ideas i think like what's kind of like the goal we're kind of like maybe it's something that's kind of stream of consciousness like we usually do yeah. we can have uh a, a couple different show ideas that we've been like mulling around you tell us <laughs> basically this is gonna be free so if you're not already a patron you might be listening to this somehow maybe i'm i plugged it on social media and you're like oh that's the chick from the thing yeah uh, from the Schmodown, or like that's the guy who edits the Schmodown. I'm assuming you're all Schmodown fans. <laughs> so let's just say this is a movie podcast, but it's also so much more. Is this yeah. content candy? This is well. So we had the, we had the idea of a name. We, we got the name. The name down of the brand of a content candy. We don't know if that was going to be like a different channel or, or like, like or what like, is that? Or like a podcast that's name kind in of general. What I mean. Is this um, is this content candy? I kind of I liked the idea of content candy being like the name of the overall podcast. I think that should be your LLC content candy llc i think that's what we do we make it like content candy llc is the name of like the whole company yeah yeah it's content candy and then within that we want to have like a few different show ideas yeah. like we want to have um the like uh world discussion oh so that was yeah show. that was a really good show idea that was sort of like um going in world like really deep in world and stuff like stuff talking like, about like our favorite like fictional worlds yeah like you know game of thrones and, and pokemon and how long did you think I was going to make it through this episode without talking about Pokemon? Yeah, Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks. How long did you think I was going to make it through this episode without mentioning Twin Peaks? But you didn't see that coming. Twin Pikachu. Twin Pikachu. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Call up the stonk market. I think I have a meme. Uh, no, the Twin Peak Pikachu crossover event or like thing that, that has already hit because yeah. uh, I have a picture of Cheryl Lee holding up a picture mm. of Cheryl Lee like with a nocturnal or whatever that knocked owl. Yeah. Yeah, because like the knocked owl is not what they seem. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you know, stuff like that. You know, I I feel like a good starting place for that is just we watched some of the new Twilight Zone last night. Um, maybe we can just give them a peek of what the show would look like. Yeah. We just right now uh, talk about stuff the way we talk about it when we're alone. Yeah. Which I'm assuming like, is what people want to. Well, we talk about like stuff that I want. Yeah. But I mean, but beyond that, we did want to have like just like kind of the space to. Do you know fun shows ideas and just kind of have like discussions, which I know like we've lived in a year now of video based content where it's like live streaming is the place to be and you know like mm-hmm. interactive video content is like mm-hmm. really really popular. I do think it has put like a bit of like a a dent into like pre recorded content, but I think we're starting to bounce back a little bit. I think people. Uh, you know, like with like Christian's thing with the big thing, and like Andrew Jimalante has his own podcast now. People are starting to kind of go back to like wanting to do pre-recorded content because it's more comfortable to like just sit down and just kind of like interact with the person in front of you and like maybe not to look at the chat. You mean? Yeah, not to look at the chat, not to like you know dance for the dollars and such. <laughs> uh, I never dance for the dollars. I'm just dancing, and the dollars come, and yeah. there's not that many dollars, and also I'm completely broke. Uh, <laughs> and it, look, let's be honest, this is going on a Patreon perk tier. We're still dancing for our dollars. We're just doing it and pretending like it's the privacy. Yeah, but the dance is pre-recorded at least. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's edited maybe. <laughs> like genuine pony boys, just in the background, being like wong. Yeah. <laughs> wong. Wah, wah. Um, just imagine me doing Shane Tatum's dance right now from from Magic Mike. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but I think the goal is uh, the big goal here, though, is to turn this room into a media room, uh, which we'll have to be able to do this, like these uh, podcasts, um, do like streaming and like game nights, stuff like that. You know, mm-hmm. the whole the whole thing and. The whole- yeah, Nine yards. So, like, yeah, so bear with us as we kind of, like, you know, like, uh, poke our way through this because, like... Pokey our way through this. Yeah, this might sound, like, a little echoey, a little, like, roomy, like, at the time, but uh, well, yeah. but for, for the time being, like, we're, you're, we're growing, so hopefully you just enjoy growing with us. We're growing. Thank you for growing with us. Do we give them, like, a little sampling of the kind of content they can expect to see here? Yeah, so it's just, like, kind of a brainstorm about the stuff, the kind of stuff we talked about. Okay, so, like, like more show do. ideas, not specifically how I want to talk about the Twilight Zone right yeah, now. Yeah, so show ideas first, okay. and then we'll talk about whatever okay. you want. Okay, so we had the one where we're going to go in-world. Um, we also had an idea. Well, let's explain the in-world one. Yeah, so it's, like, we would just go real deep and, like, talk about, like, sort of try to figure out and parse, like, different universes. Um, and, of course, I'm, we're, I'm not... I'm not personally the expert on very many universes, but I have a lot of questions. Yeah. I have so many questions, and sometimes those questions can be uh, quite humorous. Uh, and, and sort of, uh, I think for people who are bigger fans of certain IPs, can 
shed light on an interesting little it's not like i'm like i'm so interesting i figured out the loophole that makes <laughs> no sense in like civil war yeah but uh you know being a newbie to a lot of this fandom community uh can lead to some pretty silly questions yeah i mean but the, i think this started though with uh twin peaks because i i you know at this last year i watched all of twin peaks uh with you yes. and you're a pretty you know solid expert on like that show and the I world a class on twin peaks. <laughs> and and uh you know kind of uh, poking away at what that world involved okay, and how, anyway. how it's structured and like how you know like it works mm-hmm. um that was kind of the idea or the idea stemmed for like just exploring worlds that we like because then i would share with you other worlds of uh fictional shows like that i liked um and movies attack on titan attack on titan yeah that was a big one who yeah. bloody did i have some questions yeah you I had questions I, I had to like you know bite my tongue for for most of it because i was like you'll, like you'll see like don't I'm, worry why are these things why is there a wall what's yeah. wall maria can you draw me a map <laughs> yeah. yes i did draw a map several times to i was like i don't get it there's so there's more than one wall yeah. okay i'm not gonna spoil attack on titan guys but there is more than one wall in yes. that show <laughs> and yeah. the wall is our humanity yeah um so yeah it would just be like kind of a general like each episode we would talk about like a different like fictional world that we like just kind of like going over like the the uh, understanding of it and like mm-hmm. uh, informing each other about it we might have a guest on to who if they're like an expert in that world it's like a big you know fan favorite of theirs or if they knew nothing about it and i could pretend like i know some stuff and there's also like you know i don't think it need to, i don't even think it necessarily needs to be a huge ip i think what's fun about this is like when we watch something that really excites us like movies like recently there was that movie caveat that i feel like i told the whole internet about and got like a lot of people really psyched about it and i just went hard on it for like it was like you know two days i watched nothing but that movie over and over and i think i figured out some like points about it and like something about that world speaks to me and i feel like we can really go into it yeah i think we have singular you know uh visions of like the world that we get a glimpse into from like movies or like a a very short series Mm -hmm. um like i know at the time of this recording we haven't watched the green knight yet but oh i I had a dream about last night yeah but it seems like that would be like a world that we might be into right well it's based on a poem yeah but it's like but there's like you know green wood giant thing that he's hunting and there's like yeah. the, there's like that shot of like the, like the giants like walking in the, in the on is the it plains a, is, it, is it is it one of those things from lord of the rings is it an m an ent an ent very is good fi- is he fighting an ent he's not, i don't think it's an ent is it an ent king maybe like a wood nymph i don't know yeah i think there's also to be an episode where you explain magic to me <laughs> because oh not like magic like the concept not like magic like like you know like but where the lighter fluid come from michael uh, I mean, magic like the game because yeah. I now have a bunch of magic cards yeah. and I'm trying to figure out what. I think we could are. definitely get a, a, another expert on to we have Lewis t- on talk about, to talk that. about yeah. that. Yeah, Lewis or I guess you know Shook Knight or several other friends. Yeah, yeah, they don't have to physically be here, but it would help yes. a lot. Yeah. Um, what do you think the dynamic would be? Because I've had this before on the podcast, like on the live in the dark, where it's like two people in a room together and then one, one person remoting in. I feel like that works, but it like it feels a little bit like like you're in a scene from a movie about the future and like it's a little bit awkward yeah i mean it's it's like martin mcfly having a conversation with his co-worker in like back <laughs> to the future part two where you're like, yeah oh. mcfly exactly yeah and needles played by needles is that supposed to be billy zane again no it's it's played by um the uh, flea oh it's flea from oh yeah this is when flea got big into acting this yeah. is big lebowski yeah uh, that's weird. I feel like those are the actually I said big into acting. I feel like those are Flea's two only roles was the Big Lebowski and Back to the Future Part Two. Yeah, big year for him. Big, big year for big, Flea. Big era. For um, Flea. Yeah, we could have people like Brad on to talk about Back to the Future. Yeah, yeah. It's a, again, it's a world. You know, people love it, and it's it, world building. It's, yeah, it's what I've always been interested in, and especially. It would yeah. just be our outlet because, like, I think naturally the thing that we do about like these worlds is like time kind of, kind of, is dissect like the logic of it, mm-hmm. is, like kind of like what, what we like about it, what we think kind of like doesn't work. Um, and that's like just what we usually have fun doing like when we really get into it like what does this mean like what if like this thing happened in the world like yeah like you know how people got about that movie um it follows where they were like or like us where they're like well what happens when you get on a plane yeah it follows would be a good one you know that's a good example you know like or us or like something where it's like what happens when you like get on an airplane does it follow you (laughs) half of these are like what happens when you get on a plane (laughs) well specifically i feel like with us and it follows the issue was what happens when you get on an airplane (laughs) yeah (laughs) does it does it go with you or does it go does it how's it what would happen yeah was it scary yeah it what happens when you get on a plane like everything's just like yeah. what happens when you get what on happens a plane when you get, yeah it's like twin peaks what happens when you get on a plane that should be the name of the podcast what happens when you get on a plane yeah what happens when you get on a plane colon and other questions that drew probably has about the movie old <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah what if a plane flew over the, the, the uh well that was a question thing. i did have about old yeah. i mean it seems like at one point they're flying the helicopter perilously close to the part yeah. of the island yeah, that's true 
Um, like airplanes must go over <laughs> that place a lot, right? It's not like unnamed airspace. Yeah, it's not the village. I've been doing for the one to talk about. Right. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, can we just do a whole Shyamalan verse? The Shyamalan verse? No. Well, the thing is, he, yeah. I think we, we could probably do like a multi part thing on that because like, cool. he, he. It is supposed to be a shared universe. Yeah. No, not, not necessarily. Well, not, some, not, of, not, some of it. Way. Some of it. Not not necessarily. <laughs> yeah, some of them are shared, but like I don't think. But all is there of any proof that there is there's a, like something sorry antithetical about like them like is there any proof that like one does not like does a visit absolutely not put, take place in the sixth sense world? Maybe I mean I don't know. I mean like maybe because he did that movie he produced that movie Devil and that was supposed to be part of like chapter one of the Shyamalan verse. <laughs> Yeah, like, like seriously that's how it yeah. opens it's like the Shyamalan world or something yeah. behold the dark universe the dark universe with <laughs> yeah. Bokeem Woodbine <laughs> um, and Logan Marshall Green yeah but I mean, Shyamalan puts so much work into like his world you know like it's despite how they turn out like he really puts a lot of effort into those I things I appreciate so, that yeah. about them I'm just asking if the grim snarl or whatever from Lady in the Water <laughs> exists in Haley Joel Osment's like seeing ghost universe yeah i don't think they do but we could definitely talk about that what do you think Haley girl joel osmond who grew up with a ghost therapist a uh, ghost of therapy about in the future like wait in the future do you think like he's like so as a child my big trauma was my therapist was uh, a ghost <laughs> and, <laughs> and, 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 and that, that therapist is like it's still me <laughs> it's, so, it's still bruce willis <laughs> <laughs> he's like i'm still here kid. Yeah. <laughs> man i could talk about that we could also talk about there this could be a whole separate podcast things that drew predicted that would happen <laughs> <laughs> drew movies that drew have seen recently where she has called her shot from <laughs> first five minutes of that movie yeah i think that would just be our general movie reviews which oh yeah we can have a movie review show. yeah we can do movie reviews I, i've you know i miss doing movie reviews with my old podcast mates um how does that work i've never done like a straight review show. uh the structure that we usually had which we you know kind of like you know copied from like other lots of podcasts is we sit down we talk about our general thoughts of it we do like a spoiler free five to ten minute discussion and then we uh move into like a full-on spoiler discussion wait what's a spoiler free discussion no, just how like how you just like general like did you like it you know did it did it your expectations stuff like that without having to like uh, uh you know dive too into like too many details okay so give me an example let's pick the movie okay let's pick the show succession you've only watched two episodes of the show succession what's a spoiler free? but that's hard because i don't even, i don't even know the spoilers yet because okay. i haven't finished the season well something big happens at the end of episode well no that's not that's not that's <laughs> you can't have the first again know the spoilers and just like tease the other one okay so, okay, fine. so we pick a movie that we just recently watched old pre let's talk about oh, old, old, okay. old so we, we talk about old like the you know do an opening spoiler free discussion which is like what did you think of it did you like it did you do, like how does it stack like up it. how does it stack up against his other films stuff like that okay, without so going into go. too many like details let's do an example so okay. i know and the audience knows what this will sound like okay quick example is old the new film from emily Shyamalan, uh okay. stars uh now yep. alex wolf yes now alex wolf alex wolf uh, yeah garcia uh, Bernal. Uh, yeah uh, thomas and mckenzie uh thomas and mckenzie thomas and mckenzie the girl her name was mckenzie davis no. mckenzie grace mckenzie davis is the one from, from the terminator yeah and mckenzie grace is isn't no. that the, 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 this young girl who like no. you're always talking are you talking about thomas mckenzie the whole thomas time mckenzie's one from jojo rabbit oh okay no there's another girl mckenzie grace you're always talking about her and you're always no like, i'm not no you're always like mckenzie grace is so who's the, don't know who that is who's the little girl you're always talking about like who's in a oh, lot of movies? Uh, uh, McKenna Grace. Okay, so guys, I wasn't that far off. I was like a syllable off. <laughs> McKenna Grace. Yes, yeah, like as close as Taika Waititi. Uh, no, Mackenzie Grace and McKenna Grace <laughs> are like you would give that a benefit of the doubt. No, you would not. You would McKenzie absolutely. and McKenna. Are Those are not close at all. McKen names. One of them just has a different vowel at the end, basically. <laughs> one's a Z and one's an uh. Like that's the same name. Like. Gareth Edwards and Gareth Edwins, Evans, like you have to give it to me. No, those are two different people. That's, well, a, that's, a, even, that's a worse example. <laughs> I mean, but I know which one did which. Spoiler <laughs> did you, which, which one did which? Okay, so Gareth. Um, <laughs> no, I had this. I had this the other day. Gareth Edwards did Rogue One. Gareth Evans did um, the Raid. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Good job. You know why? Because I think about it, I think in Star Wars, they were all British, or like some of them were British, and Edward sounds like a British person's name, and in the raid, they were um, Indonesian, I want to say. Yeah, okay, okay so they were Indonesian, and Evans sounds like a guy who would go to Indonesia on like his senior year like trip, and then come back and be like, I learned so much about myself. There you go. There you go. So anyways, old. 
Um, <laughs> we would also try to rein it in. To get to the movie. No, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, old. It's you know, I it's a new film from Emma Shaman. I uh, kind of heard the general uh, consensus of what the film was to a lot of people uh, coming into it before we saw it because we saw it like a week later after it came out. Yeah. And uh, I, uh, again, I thought the concepts that I was playing with were interesting. Like the first you know, act of it, like, definitely had me invested, like, and I don't think there's any point that I thought, like, I was checked out, I don't think it was, like, a boring film, necessarily, I just thought, like, a lot of the choices that I utilized the concepts with were, like, questionable and kind of, like, weird, like, I don't think I, you know, they were their best used the way the film used them. It's really hard, like, to listen to you talk like this, because I can only think of talking in details, so I'm just, like, <laughs> how are you talking sort of general concepts? Like, you're just being so vague, and, like, all I want to do is be, like, what are you, which, what part are you talking about? Uh, I mean, you just gotta imagine it that you're speaking to someone who hasn't seen it. Okay, so here it is. So, like, so you, so you, you know so the title so of the you, movie so, is old, so right? You, so You've seen you, the poster. <laughs> so the thing is, you have to, you have to speak, speak about it as if you're speaking to someone who hasn't seen it yet because if you start speaking in details, they're not gonna know what you're talking about. Okay, well here. You've seen the poster for old, right? You've you've heard the title. Uh, we, so. we can assume they've seen the trailer. You've seen the trailer. Yeah. So people are getting old yeah. in this movie yeah. and a rate that is not normal. Yeah. Faster. Yes. Can I tell you something real quick? Uh, if you haven't seen the movie, that's it. There are no more details. There's no big twist. There's nothing else to it, really. Not really. I mean, if you were talking about like overall takeaway to this movie, what surprised me most about it was how simple it was. Like just really, I mean, it it sort of hinted at a larger concept, but I, I really kind of, I also felt like it was a good emotional core to it. But like it, it kind of felt like a movie that was like a half baked pilot idea. Because it hinted at larger mysteries, never really addressed them, and kind of just ended up focusing on the more like, it's like he saw Hereditary halfway through and was like, you know what, these people, <laughs> this should really just be about the family. Yeah. And like, screw the mystery, and like, let's just focus in on like how these people interact with each other. Yeah. And yeah. and then the third act was completely different than <laughs> that. The third act was like, no, we just watched us, and there should be like uh, three exposition dumps at the end. <laughs> yeah um but that's an example of a oh that's an example kind of, of a spoiler it's spoiler free oh i did it yeah yeah except yeah. i would say like selling a movie doesn't have a twist in it well it uh, does from, from from specifically from m night M- M- shaman is kind of a spoiler but it because people mm-hmm. go in thinking like is there gonna be a twist like you know well i guess it's also arguable whether i'm correct <laughs> i think like a there, lot there, of people I, there I were, could, say there were our twists in this movie you I just, could say there is a reveal but I don't it's not necessarily it a twist I don't even know what the difference is or what I would consider the reveal. Because it's not like, I mean, there, yeah, there's just like a, there's like a, uh, in any movie, I guess there's something that you did not know going into it that, that, that you then discover over the course of the movie. That's the nature That's true, of yeah. narratives. Yeah. But there's nothing here that you're like, I would, there's, there's yeah. no misdirect. Well, yeah, there's like, the movie sets up like a very, uh, the, it's big, straightforward. The, it's just, it was, the movie sets up the, the straightforward question, like, why are they getting old? And then it gives it the answer. Like, it doesn't really but, like, throw you the, for a loop. But is the point of the movie, that. like, why are they getting, it's not like the point of the sixth sense is like, why are well, people getting That's the point, but it, yeah. it definitely raises the question, like, to you. Like, you want, you naturally want to know, like, why is this happening? I, I guess, yeah, I guess the film just kind of takes this point of like, and I think a character says at one point, not to get too specific, but I guess we've ended the spoiler free section. I guess at one point a character just says, like who care? I think the character's just like who cares? Let's go make sandcastles. Yeah. Like they're like, let's stop trying to freaking worry about the logic of it. It's very much like kind of like how in Lady in the Water, there's like a character who's supposed to be the critic, and like everyone hates him. And there's characters, there's like the writer, and they kind of just speak in the voice of like M Night Shyamalan, like alone in a room typing out the script and being like, be, trying to be very clever. Yeah. But it's just very clearly him talking to us. It's yeah. one man talking to the audience, and I felt like this movie was very much that, where he's like saying. You know, like at the end of the day, like who cares why this is the way that it is? Like I'm gonna try to explain some aspects I mean, of it. That that'd be respectable if the film actually did that, which it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, right. And then, then you're right because he says that he says like kind of doesn't matter. And then by the end, the third act is just like this 20 minute long exposition dump of stuff that we. Yeah, you're right. It's a reveal in the sense we didn't know uh, any of that information up until this point, but it's also like arbitrary information that just feels kind of tacked on like unnecessary. If they had ended it, are we done with the spoiler free part? I guess. Okay, fine. I, spoilers for old, uh, starting now. now. And then I had, I had a little spoiler bumper that I made. Okay, so now the spoiler bump is gone. Yeah. So in this movie, it is discovered that uh, people are moving, it's a time trap. So people are moving or are aging at a increased rate. The children are aging, of course, uh, look like they're aging way more rapidly than the parents because, you know, cells uh, die and regenerate every seven years. So 
kids' bodies grow up really fast in this in this island, little inlet. And um, so it's also a way that you like get like the kid actors to grow up and get played by older, better actors. <laughs> and it, it looks like very visually interesting where the adults don't really change physically throughout the movie. Like they get a little bit of gray hair. They don't really do a lot with the prosthetics. Uh, I, I had this thought somewhere along the line that like maybe he didn't get a good makeup guy or maybe like he just, I don't know. It felt like kind of like a school play kind of makeup job. But uh, the reveal is that the island has some sort of secret magnetic force uh, working underneath it. Magnets. That, it's magnets. Um, and that people have been sent to this part of the island by the hotel that they are staying at. The hotel that has like a... Apparently, we were just told like halfway through when they were like, what's up with the hotel? Was that place shady? And they were like, oh, yeah. I guess I did find it online when they like emailed me to tell me I want a free trip. And it turns out everyone there uh, has uh, some sort of disease that uh, is being tested on. They're testing medicine. The Island Hotel is testing medicine because it's a secret laboratory that tests medicine on people by sending them to an island where they will age rapidly and thus the, the, the standardized like time for taking a test. And you wouldn't have to wait for somebody to live an entire life to find out whether your medicine worked and cured their, let's say, for example, epilepsy. Uh, you could just watch them over the course of a day as M. Night Shyamalan, the actual uh, actor, in his own film, does. He watches all the characters. Oh, I see. It's a metaphor. Yes. Okay. I got you. I got that. So over the- in this film, you watch M. Night Shyamalan watch his own characters as they seek to understand a pretty pretty easy problem, which is uh, this island makes you age fast. Yeah. That's it. It's like there's not that much to it. And I guess the twist is supposed to be the reason they, they've been sent to this island is because they're being experimented on, but like not in a cool, like social, social, like dynamic way, which is usually when you get movies like Cube or stuff where it's yeah. like, what are how they all these personalities gonna interact? It's like, no, it's just been different families have been sent there, families with kids, which is kind of like messed up. Uh, they even mentioned at one point they're like, shouldn't we just send the mental people to a different island, like, or like separate them so the crazy people don't end up killing the people we're trying to like study and they're like no like screw it (laughs) but like the bigger question is because we're told that these people have been chosen because they can be disappeared like off the face of the earth and no one will notice but so many of them have kids it seems like like they're not single childless people they have children and those children uh will grow up very fast on the island but then those children will also last longer than their parents and be able to escape hypothetically yeah feels like a problem that could have been solved easily by picking childless couples um so I guess there's a lot there. At the end, the kids escape. They're already 50. Um, thankfully, they one of them was already precocious enough to be like a writer, like at Night Shyamalan. So he's he's already gone up and asked everyone their occupation before the movie started. Uh, he's a little twerp. He grows up to be Alex Wolf and then someone else. So when he gets off the island he, or gets off the little inlet, he's able to go up to a police officer who he knows is a police officer. And we've established because he's already said hello, sir, what's your name? And are you, like, what's your job? Which he's done with everyone in the film. I thought the jobs would go and play a bigger part in this movie. Yeah. So that's anyway. old. That's, uh, that's yeah. pretty much all of old, I think, uh, as described. Uh, but uh, that would be the general idea of like, a spoiler-free discussion. Well, that or was spoiler, a spoiler well. discussion, sorry. Okay. Yeah. And then, but if it was a discussion, you would talk more too. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Just to be clear. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's it's that, and then uh, what was the other idea that we had for? I don't know if we had another idea. Well, beyond like, uh, well, for podcasting is specifically in general, we also had the idea of like the game podcast for the sequel, oh. the sequel game. The sequel game yeah. where we come up with sequel ideas. Yeah, so like the go- the goal of the game would be, uh, you start pitching like a movie, from like you know like page by page like or like you know act by act like just going from the beginning to the end and we have to uh as soon as we can guess it we have to see if we can get it. every pitch that we're saying is a sequel to another movie but you don't know that right away wait so sorry so uh, like you I, you know i would be like i would start saying you know like the, i would start giving you like the character like their you know motivation like what they're doing at the plot and like but the twist of every pitch that we're saying is that it is a sequel to a previous ip or film and you listening have to guess like what it is would you have to say the name so i feel like that would give it away so uh, the terminator is good <laughs> damn it <laughs> yeah. i guess the goal would be to like be a little more clever than that <laughs> yeah so uh what we have is tyler durden is going no because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we've uh kaiser yeah. so saying yeah like, we, we we've had they'd be like i guess t- uh, tangential i've like, also never sequels. heard this idea by the way yeah we have because like basically i i, I don't want to spoil this like but it was 
I'll, uh, the, it only works if I spoil it. So the example that I had was because of It Follows. Because I remember I remember telling you about like that sequel idea for It Follows, no. where it's about like a woman oh. who uh, is just on who's constantly moving with her daughter um, around the world. Is the daughter a product of the of the sex time that she had that caused the It Follows? Well, for, from the like whoever whatever yeah, person yeah. she had sex with, yeah, yeah, that's and cool. And so like the woman's like constantly moving around, but the daughter doesn't know why. So but the film would open with just like this like the the POV kind of of the daughter like. Moving around with her weird mom, who like constantly lo- just wants to move. She has to leave like every like. She's couple, agoraphobic because couple, she doesn't like. Years. Yeah, she doesn't like looking at people. Like yeah. she's or she's always like scanning the crowd yeah, like yeah, really she hard. She wants to leave every couple of years, and uh, so always, yeah, and then never knows why. And then like you every know, couple of years, oh, my God, how fast can they outrun this thing? Yeah, but like if you she got on the plane. If you constantly travel like on the plane from <laughs> she got on the plane. continent to continent, you know, like, that's, I guess the logic. Um, and we can kind of like play with the logic of the of that creature well, too. What if, what if but, also good? Um, but uh, the uh reveal would be uh that um the mother thinks that like the creature is coming after like her like herself um but then like you realize it's actually coming after like uh, her daughter uh because of like uh uh, and would just be like a, a mythos building thing but it's because like a, a child was born of like the sex uh, yeah from the, from the creature like you know passage thing like it's like would then be the target i have no i was about to say i think the the cool idea because like when the mom have tried to pass it on at a certain point so like i think the cool idea is the daughter is the one thing that can like beat it like the daughter is actually this powerful like well, i guess it, that would be like the 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 final like you know yeah conclusion to that story like her mom's been running away this entire time but in fact the monster is like sc- like scared of the little girl because like the little girl is like you know technically the one thing that it is like on par with it because it is also a creature of like the the sex like you could really play with the idea of like what is this entity was it after because it is a it's basically every time you have sex with somebody you create like a a new timeline for it yeah but maybe scared i don't know about scared because maybe not scared but maybe it's in love with her or maybe it's like i don't know it definitely doesn't react to her the same way and she has an ability over it yeah i definitely i just like the idea of or like and like the kind of so what happens when she gets on visual reveal this is is (laughs) yeah this is called what happens when it goes on plane yeah i like the visual reveal of uh the woman who um like she miscalculates like the time or something and like she's mm-hmm. gonna catch her catch up with her and she thinks it's like gonna you know finally get her but like it like, just like kind of walks past her mm-hmm. and like starts like going towards her daughter oh what if the mom also is like kind of a like we see that from the pov of the girl the mom's constantly sleeping around so she thinks her mom's kind of a whore but it's really her mom trying to to yeah pass it around yeah. toss it on yeah pass it on yes toss it on because mm-hmm. every time the thing that it follows is like you can pass it's very slow it moves methodically and it only moves why am i oh i just realized why i'm thinking of under the silver lake for another version of this is because it's by the same freaking guy uh <laughs> yeah. i was like because under the silver lake would have like a lot of ideas i'd like to spin off um the thing is this is only one entity it moves very slowly kind of plods around and like you can go in a car and you can go on a plane and like it's going to try to keep getting you unless you go and pass it on like a venereal disease to someone else. And then it will switch directions and try to go after that person. And as soon as it kills that person, it will go back to trying to find you. Yeah. But if you can move enough down the chains, like if the person you had sex with then has sex with someone else, the creature then diverts its path once again, kill, tries to kill the person that the person you had sex with had sex with and then we'll go back to him and then we'll go back to you. So you can ostensibly if you were with somebody like a prostitute, you could possibly make the timeline long enough or like give yourself enough buffer if they yeah if they're successful they have a lucrative business i guess yeah (laughs) and if the person if their johns are also like going to a lot of other prostitutes yeah then you could ostensibly like pass it on like like really far you know you could really make maybe give yourself like a a head start there so it looked like from the perspective of the mom who probably has like riddled with venereal diseases (laughs) like just really took one for the team there (laughs) constantly going and sleeping with uh you know she's got hepatitis she's got like you know hiv she's just really sick all the time but she's constantly going and sleeping with more people yeah um and this yeah. daughter's just like what the hell yeah yeah i just like that i uh, like that visual reveal. I, I like the reveal i got uh, those like reveals of like uh you know like a, the, especially for i think for horror films particularly the reveal of like realizing like you're in like a kind of known ip i think the similar feeling is not quite uh, as set up but Linda similar Hamilton is, is no oh. <laughs> in a uh, ray player one ray player one when like they go to the shining and like from the audience like they don't make it like a mystery or like, or, like surprise necessarily that the shining is going to come up because like they you know they make an announcement that they're going to go see it 
but I like the feeling that you get in the audience when they get to the Overlook Hotel and they walk in and it's like you see like the Overlook Hotel and you're kind of like, like you have that like oh shit moment like we're like in The Shining like oh like not- you, oh yeah the moment where yeah. you realize that you're in the like yeah. like our last night when we watched The Twilight Zone like I started getting goosebumps even though the episode was terrible when Jaja <laughs> Beats like saw the Blurry Man and it like came out of the shadows and it was literally Rod Sterling yeah <laughs> and he was like hello we need to have a talk yeah. you are entering a space and you're like oh man so I think that's really good I think what's hard about that about it follows is there's unless you play, just play that uh disaster piece theater soundtrack like it's really hard to find the identifiable image or indelible image because this creature keeps changing form yeah so it's like you really have to figure it out what is interesting i think or maybe the dis would be the difficulty of making a, a sequel to it follows where this is the plot is that the it always has to be that the kid the mom is scared for the kid's life right yeah but by definition like the kid is fine unless she does unless she has sex with somebody yeah. The kid is safe. Like the mom would know that. But they, I think it, the harder question is why the mom just didn't give the kid up for adoption and like keep the kid safer, like away from her. Maybe, yeah. You know, so like, why didn't she just like, no, like yeah. put the kid in a nunnery and was like, Maybe, never have sex? That could be questions that we raise in 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 the treatment of it. Maybe it's the kid who's going to find her mother. And the mom has always been sending her postcards and like telling her where she is. Like, like, yeah, I think I could, maybe it could work. Yeah. You know, she's now old enough where she's like 15 or 16. So yeah. she's old enough to have to start having sex herself. And she's like finding her mom who's been on the run her whole life. Who she has one image of, of being like a real slutty kind of like, like ne'er do well mom. And then it turns out her mom's just been running from this entity her whole life. And that she is a creature of this entity. Um, that would also kind of explain why the entity has visited this young girl already. Cause it's like, has some sort of connection to her. Yeah. And is also trying to find the mom. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, so that's, that's the concept. Yes, that's, um, yeah, yeah, so that's, that's it. That's the game is like coming up with these treatments of like sequels. You know? I'm really good at this <laughs> as I knew I would be even before it was explained. <laughs> let me try to do one and you see if you can get it. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me think of one real quick. Mm. Usually we would let you have like a day or two. To yeah. But you know me, I just think about it last minute anyway. <laughs> um, let me think. What's the movie? What's the movie? Okay. So in this film, okay, in this film, oh yeah, you're right. This is harder than I thought. In this film, <laughs> can it be a prequel? Yeah, sure. Okay. As long as, long as it was like the uh, like a kind of a setup of like you know like a mystery uh, mystique to it that we don't know like okay. what it is right away. Okay, so this is about a young man. Uh, I won't give you his name, and he is a. Uh, obsessed with uh, the idea of uh creation like the, the idea that man cannot create life you know very frankenstein dr frankenstein kind of thing and he is uh kind of you know he's never had really close connections in his life he's kind of steve jobs-esque in that way it's a prequel to frankenstein no it's not a prequel <laughs> to frankenstein he's kind of steve jobs-esque in this way and he's very successful in his his career path and he's creating new businesses and new sort of models for 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 life and sustainable life he's really into biology and and uh nanobots and all this stuff and he eventually runs into uh i guess kind of like an elon musk sort of jeffrey bezos issue of like well or james cameron is like well do i go underneath the water or do i go to the stars Mm -hmm. like what are those two things that i can do between the two of them Uh, and i guess you can see where this is going that man's name whatever wayland <laughs> jeffrey wayland <laughs> <laughs> jeffrey wayland <laughs> wayland smithers wayland Smith- yeah, yeah you see where i'm going with this yeah. and it's and it's guy pierce and it's uh i think yes i mentioned steve jobs because he creates uh michael fassbender <laughs> and this is a se- this is a prequel to the prequel of prometheus <laughs> it's just about the art it's just about james franco trying to rock climb that one time yeah <laughs> it's about everyone on the ship before you've ever met them it's billy kudrup and his wife there's a yeah, James Franco's there. Um, we see Ian Holm getting built. We see Lance Hendrickson building Lance Hendrickson. Yeah. It's really weird. Yeah. They're all just making copies of their own selves. <laughs> like it's we. I guess it's weird when I think about it. Ian Holm is the first robot we're introduced to in the Alien franchise, but then from then on, we're supposed to assume because of the retcon that Bishop and all of them are made in the same image of Waylon. Yeah. But, like, he just made Ian Holm also. (laughs) 
You will all be made in my image, but except this one guy who's Ian Holmes. He's a big Lord of the Rings fan. Yeah. And then he's like also Steve Jobs fan. Because <laughs> the first one he made, yeah. retconning again, is the first one he made was just Michael Fassbender. Yeah. And he's like, screw this. The reds are going to look like me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that'd be, the, that'd be the game. I mean, it's fun to have kind of like, it's like a more like a you know, workshop type of thing. And I really am noticing writing, something. I'm writing, noticing something. Writing exercise. I think we're interested in in-world stuff. Like we are that. yeah like what about the, your game that you had once upon a time about um the the locations the villains and the objects? yeah that's like yeah that that's a that's a fun game we did a couple of times on my old podcast which is just like these uh i think it's what's it called it's um uh fantasy film fights and it's just mm-hmm. yeah I mean, it seems just, a little you, like you, you, you just give me an eye roll like yeah, well it's because like, it, it sounds a lot like like, like the, the she give me that I, I could think of better but yeah no not that i can think of better, but there's already something that sounds a lot like that movie fights <laughs> it's already yeah. exists and was yeah. a thing yeah so it was particularly it's pretty fancy yeah, it's, yeah whatever it's just alliteration how about how about this also movie fights isn't around anymore so we win yeah so we win just by nature of not existing yet <laughs> yeah. it's like being dead versus not being born exactly um i think something there's like, only a poor trajectory for us how about boss battles <laughs> Boss battles. Ultimate boss battles or like mega boss because it is what it is. Is will you explain the game? Yeah. Um, well, it's always like bosses. That's the thing. But anyways, um, it's, final boss. Yeah, we have uh, we have like lists of like well, the one that we did before was like specifically like horror films. Because, like, oh, I like we, that. We did it for like uh, Halloween and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so we had like a list of like a bunch of horror film protagonists and like horror film like antagonists, you know, famous villains and stuff. And then we had like lo- famous locations, like the Overlook Hotel or like uh, Outpost Thirty One from The Thing, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Uh, very famous iconic uh, scenery. And or we the would just... crawl space from Caveat, guys. Go see Caveat, <laughs> just, please. Guys, right? And then we would. Uh, uh randomly generate uh like scenarios so we would like randomly, oh yeah and objects too like right? magical objects uh, or, like, that was something that we came up with like you and me oh like, i like the as, idea as, of the as objects. A yeah like that was like an like another like variable to throw into the mix so like 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 not that i know that much about magic but what i'm sort of realizing is is that there's there's creatures there's locations and there's also objects right yeah and like those are the three variables. Yeah. So like we get Pokemon's so, like so that we, too, so we, I guess. Yeah, so we randomize like the participants. So mm-hmm. it'd be like you know random like hero mixed with a random villain, and then put into a random scenery. Then like as the thing goes on, but like halfway through, like it is and this is like it's, this is like movie fights. It's like a verbal like you know. Yeah, this guy's kind of, building. All this sort of world building. Yeah. Yeah, like it's a verbal like uh, you know kind of game, mm-hmm. and uh, like halfway through, once we get to like a certain point, like uh, you know we can like then call in like a, a randomized like, item. To see if that would help, like or change things up. Yeah, like so. If you got like, if you were at the Overlook Hotel and you were fighting Freddy Krueger, and you got Ash's chainsaw from Army of Darkness, go. You, that wouldn't help you at all. <laughs> I don't know. Like I don't know. Um McGregor did a really good job using his old, just whatever, like that baseball bat and like the power of his mind, mind trace to like make the Overlook Hotel work in his favor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there'd be like the yeah mag- magical objects you could have like yeah the chainsaw it could be like you know kind of literal objects that just like do literal things like a chainsaw it could be like a baseball bat whatever or it could be like you know like, a topa like, could be like a topa or like or like a crucifix for like the necronomicon just, you yeah know, stuff like that or like a to- would a topa be an object or a topa be a person i think a topa would be i think an object because what I think it topa is would a copy ha- of you i think a topa would uh, it's not like it's like big oh, it's enough. not copy yeah it's not big enough to be like an antagonist like a villain to fight but it might work as like an element of like a scenery of like a scenario. So wait, is it because I I kind of mis misremember here? Is it that you? It's you ver, like you as yourself versus the entity, or it's like you as like you get to pick another entity and you're fighting as that entity versus someone else's entity. It's kind of like the one we did before. It was kind of like just a uh, collaborative thing. So we would like randomize it and then kind of like just do like a round table of like how do we think this would play out. Like right, like it would, it wouldn't be as like competitive, I guess. Like we could change like the I like struct- that. structure I don't like com- of it. I don't like competition. Yeah, so it's not as competitive. It's more like collaborative. So like just think like how would this work? Like I think one uh, fun one that Andres got was um, that Andres played this with us is was the like uh, uh, it, like the kids from Harry Potter have to like deal with like gremlins in like in like a parade or something like that. Like, okay. I, I can't I can't exactly remember like okay, what wait, wait, exactly wait. I like this. Were. Yeah. And what was their object? And then uh, parade for all. Yeah, I forgot what the parade was supposed to be. That was supposed to be like a specific parade or something. It's the parade from Ferris Bueller. <laughs> <laughs> Very it's, iconic. One it is. Them. It's the. I'm trying to think of other big parades like uh, the parade from. What was the one recently? We saw something where there was a big parade. Like in a horror film. Oh, we're back. A dinosaur story. Well, yeah. <laughs> like Same. In a, no, not in a horror film. Like in we're back. Like in the movie with by John Patrick Shanley. Yeah. It was not done a horror film. I realized. 
Congo is not a horror film. Yeah, you're right. It's not a horror film. Wild well, Mountain Time, mm-hmm. as much as I had some issues with it, is not technically a horror film. So yeah. what you are is you're the B from Wild Mountain Time, and you are, <laughs> you're Christopher Walken, disappointed in your B son from Wild Mountain. Sorry, spoilers for Wild Mountain Time. I guess not really. None of that made sense to you. None of that movie made sense to anybody, so that's yeah. fine. Uh, you're Joe, and you're versus the volcano. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like a scary parade this could have possibly been. Yeah, I can't remember. Okay, let me try to think. Was it like a Pennywise thing? Or was it a clown thing? What was it a clown thing? A parade? Yeah. I'm trying to see. I don't think I have my document on here, my computer. Was it the parade from that like um, Paprika movie? No, I don't think so. There's a parade in that. Like a, a, a dream parade. In... Paprika? Yeah, the an- anime. Yeah, the anime, but it's like yeah. kind of a horror anime. Like it's about like your dream self. It's sort of like a Nightmare on Elm Street kind of thing. It's not like, I think it's more fantasy than horror, but like it definitely has some horrific imagery because there's like a, you know, a dream guy and like there's like crossover people can't wake up and it's like this guy can sort of jump from dream to dream and invade it and there's like a chick who's like sort of like not real so i remember i remember so i looked it up on my computer i remember what the name of it is it's fantasy fight club love that that's that's what it was that's way better yeah um and uh let's see the scenarios that we had this is not up to date with like i think what some of the ideas that we came out of um with it uh so some of the so some of the settings i'll go through some of the settings that we have uh which is the cabin in the woods okay uh from either evil dead or like the actual film Cabin in the Woods, mm-hmm. which then opens up like a, a few other possibilities. Uh, the sewers from uh, It with Pennywise and maybe some like wait, wait the sewers or the or the area like the what's it called the um, quarry. The Cor- sewers is different than the quarry. Well, the, the sewers because that's where they, they had to navigate. It's, like, it's like a maze. They had to navigate the sewers. Okay, to, like, to, I just like, want to make sure that out. we're saying the word quarry enough. <laughs> not, not quarry, not the rock pile. Guys, we're gonna go hang out at the rock pile. Um, was see. It, was it, wait, but you do have to have the quarry from Mom. <laughs> yeah, the rock pile. <laughs> that's the one. That's the movie where they do just say, "Let's go hang out near the rock pile." Yeah, the rock pile. It's just a pile of rocks. Um, God, my God. A pet <laughs> cemetery from Pet Cemetery. How big is that area to fight in? Like, it's big. Like I think they they visualize it pretty well in the new one, the remake. Uh, like it's it's a, it's a big like wood wood area, but like deep within it. Like gets to like the kind of marsh part of it, and like that's where they have like the Indian burial ground with the big circle and stuff. It's kind of racist. <laughs> Native American circle. I don't know. Is, yeah. Wait, does that mean the kids in Pet Cemetery are Wendigos? Wendigos. Wendigos. Uh, kind of like they kind of like they 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 say they attribute the spiritual nature of the, of that area to like a Wendigo spirit. Um, oh. But they don't really like fall in line with like the traditional like you know like mythos of a Wendigo. Why not? Because like when it goes, usually it's like through like cannibalism and like it leads to like the kind of like uh, transformation of like a person into like this kind of like, you know, like a weird monster thing. Why did that, why did that start with like Native Americans or why do we attribute that to Native Americans? It is like, to Native American like mythos. Like it, you can find it in like. So a, they did cannibalism? Or they had, they knew about cannibalism? I think it was, it was like, it's like a story, you know, just like to ward off like the idea of like cannibalism. Well, because I'm thinking of Bone Tomahawk and like the idea in Bone Tomahawk is like the, the, sorry, spoilers for Bone Tomahawk. The, the big bad, the creatures that are attacking Bone Tomahawk, they're just Native Americans, but they're a certain, like, almost like a proto neanderthal native american that uh, from a tribe that had gone cannibalistic and was now hiding out in these uh, caves and they were like not they were beyond feral they were like not human anymore they were like a a different breed of sp- a species of, of humanoid yeah. that um, they communicated differently they were like blind or like they they weren't blind but they blinded their women and like yeah, yeah it was crazy uh, that'd be a good scenario too the bow tomahawk area oh my god it's not te- necessarily haunted or anything but it's yeah. very creepy did you watch the beginning of that like no i begin- missed the first like 30 minutes I okay think. so david arquette shows up i forget who the other guy is but somebody pretty famous they show up as like robbers for the first five minutes yeah. and it is like an it's like a physical space they are like go through a, a place and they're like oh this looks like an indian barrel ground and and one of them like takes a piss or something there yeah. and they're like maybe you shouldn't do that like the other one says and then 
there's like a decree i forget exactly how this goes down but there's like a crazy death like one of them dies horrifically and then the next time you see david Arquette, he's like run into town and he's like super spooked and like he's like freaking out and they're oh yeah they were robbers so they had like buried some of their treasure or they were switching clothes or something and david Arquette's like really spooked and then like they come to town for david Arquette and steal the girl in the process mm-hmm. um but so there is like a physical area that like you're not supposed to trespass on i guess is my point what about the neighborhood from poltergeist right. well uh there on the list i had camp crystal lake okay um the upside down uh some of these places are actually haunted <laughs> lv426 lv426 hold the- on hold on hold on lv426 level lv stands for level 426 oh man what's that from devil alien it's the planetoid that they find an alien sorry they named the planet level <laughs> lv426 yeah but lv stands for level <laughs> <laughs> i think lvl stands for level <laughs> in pokemon they just say lv period what does that mean uh, maybe that means level i don't know but in space according to wayland jeffrey wayland <laughs> jeffrey wayland <laughs> just, you did it it, it just means uh, lv426 okay um, uh, i got the overlook like hotel the, okay um the mansion from resident evil which I guess can also include go Ferretville, Ferretville or Beaverton. Can it, yeah, can the sister cities from Raccoon City uh, be involved, like uh, Ferretton or or Beaver Beaverville or uh, I don't know yeah. the rest of them, <laughs> Chipmunk Grove. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, got like a nightmare scenario with uh, you know, like Freddy. Well, it would, be, it would be his dream palace, right? Yeah, like dream his, palace. Yeah, that's, that's probably what it was. Uh, or like his dream place that he goes. Um, yeah um pacific playland from zombie land mm-hmm. the the amusement park mm-hmm. with like zombies in it i guess mm-hmm. uh see the gym from carrie mm-hmm. <laughs> which i guess could could be you could say a kind of scenario i guess um uh, outburst 31 from the thing the antarctica uh this is more of a not necessarily a hard horror but like it could be fun uh the labyrinth from labyrinth. Labyrinth? yeah it doesn't yeah. it can be like horror sci-fi i feel like horror fantasy or yeah, I like that. Yeah. Uh, let's see, I got the train from Train to Busan. Okay. So what about the train from Snowpiercer? Um, I guess it's not really horror though. But like a lot of these locations, they're not like them in in them uh, in and of themselves, like like spooked up. They're yeah. not like leveled up because they're spooky. Yeah. Well, usually that's so that's why I usually also do add like some sort of element in there with with scenarios. Each scenario comes with like a certain element. Uh, apply to it mm-hmm. so like the like you know, outpost 31 wouldn't just be the outpost it'd be the outpost with like the thing like running around in it not part of like your antagonist but like just like a natural element of the scenario so wait that's not your antagonist it would just be there's also like another thing yeah like the there? things like you, you could be you know you could be fighting like um yeah like a fucking uh the terminator but like there's also been there's a, the thing is also there well, that's like two. Well, well, that's two things. That's but, but, two but, but, thing, but the thing is, that the, that's, I keep saying the thing is, it was a weird example. The thing, the creature from the thing. Well, let's, let's say the, in the It Follows thing. So the, the, <laughs> the, the, the alien from the thing that would act as a kind of like a neutral uh, party crasher to like kind of, it, would, it wouldn't be on either side to be like working either for or against who or whatever it feels like in the, in the moment. Sure, but so many of these entities are, by their definition, already undead or supernatural. That feels like, you know, add a horde of zombies to the train of Busan or, like, whatever. Yeah. And naturally, you're going to have a harder time with them than the, like, Freddy Krueger will. <laughs> yeah, but... I, like, I mean, I like, yeah. I like this idea. Sometimes, sometimes like... It, 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 it could be good things. Sometimes, it, yeah, sometimes it, it, it falls pretty, like, simple. Blue fairy. <laughs> a, a genie. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Or like, I don't know, like a, something from a Black Mirror episode, like a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but like the upside down would have like like demi dogs in it or okay. uh, which are like very simple. Uh, Weather could be a, a thing. Maybe. Yeah. Like uh, Twister, the Twister from Twister could be that. <laughs> the Twister from Twister. <laughs> Uh, well, I kind of actually well, like, like that. I like, like that. Pacific, Pacific Playland has like zombie lands in it. Uh, zombie lands, zombies in it. Oh, so they all have things that are site specific to the movies that yeah, they were part yeah, of. Yeah. Oh, they all. So basically, they're populated by. The creatures of the world that we that are like we associate with them. Yeah, like LB four two six. It has oh. like you know eggs in it, like and face huggers. Oh, and and like the Shining would have the goat, like just like in Doctor Sleep, yeah. the Shining would have the entities from yeah. the Overlook. Yeah, yeah. The or Doctor Sleep, the the climax of Doctor Sleep is kind of a good like uh, example of this game because mm-hmm. it's like uh, you know two 
characters coming together in like a scenario that's like kind of like a neutral ground for them, mm-hmm. but like has like its own element that like shakes up their battle. Mm-hmm. Um, I had like you know like like the purge, like the purge night with like just so like purging the streets, people, the streets of purge, you know, with like purging people. So how would any of the bad guys uh, be worse off? Like for them, because the purge is already the purging people are the antagonists of the purge. Yeah. So what could you add to that scenario that would give you the leg up? I like, guess it, like it depends on who's evolved. You know. Okay, so read off one of the villains and add them to the purge, and we'll figure out how we're going to beat them. Okay, really, off the top of my head, random site is uh, like the strangers, like the three people from the oh, strangers. Jesus. You've just created a scenario where not only can you not tell which ones they are because they're all wearing masks, but you're essentially just dealing all with the strain. They're adding three more people who are on a murderous rampage to like break into your house and kill you to the purge. That's like kind of just a drop of water in the ocean, huh? Maybe, mm-hmm. but like they're trying to get you. So. They're trying to get you, but so is literally everybody else. Yeah. And they don't look any different. Than- <laughs> they're literally wearing the same masks as the people in the purge. Yeah. Maybe so. what you could do is... Uh, you could convince them that they should just go bother somebody else. You're like, hey, look, well, if your friends are over there. <laughs> yeah. But maybe anyways, maybe it, The Strangers is a Purge prequel. Uh, maybe, yeah. Yeah, but because this, this is where, you know, you should go, could be a little creative about it. I love this game. Yeah. But what if you had the snitch? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have, like, the woods from Blair Witch. Mm-hmm. With the, I was like, I think the Blair Witch is in there somewhere. Um, see, Bates Motel. Oh. Where's that from? Bates Motel. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. It's from the TV show Bates Motel with yeah. Vera Flamingo. Yeah. <laughs> and Vera, Vera Flamingo's there. She's running around. Oh, so Vera, we got Vera Flamingo. <laughs> We've got Patrick Wilson. Oh, God. We're, you know what? The perfect neutral catalyst to any of these situations is adding the Warrens. Yeah. Well, that's, I, I, have that's the, I have them perfect. in here. I have them in here. As like, They're as... like, that's what I think of when I think of like neutral, like uh, what do I call it? What did I call myself in the first season of the uh, Smartdown? I was like, I'm the, I want to be the Hamburglar. I just want to come yeah, in. Hamburglar. I want to come in and Hamburglar the situation, which means <laughs> yeah. come in and just basically like, be like the annoyed or whatever just come in and like screw up the situation but like not make it better for any party yeah necessarily but just kind of be like the 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 snitch or like the thing like the thing that's sort of like the macguffin that's going to like make everything more chaotic yeah the chaos macguffin yeah i think i just created a term the chaos MacGuffin. Mm -hmm. yeah i have a harrington harrington high which is a school from the faculty what was the deal with the faculty they were all aliens aliens alien like uh Pod uh, people, body snatcher type, mm-hmm. like uh, creatures, and they were getting into other people by. Uh, I think they were earworms. I might be conflating that with animorphs, but I thought they no, were like... animorphs was not about that. Yeah, animorphs, yeah, animorphs was like their their enemies were like little worms that like they would go into your ear and control you. That was who the natural enemies of the animorphs, animorphs the people like the, that could shift like, uh, shift into like, any animals. Yeah, the animorphs, the like big big bad of animorphs were earworms. Well, that doesn't feel like <laughs> that is. It feels like the bad guys of animorphs should be like Decepticons, it, other kinds of animorphs, like it, bad animals. Is it the Zerg? Is that, is that their name? No, wait, back up. Like the Yerg. I think it's the Yerg. Can I be honest? Like that doesn't make any sense. It feels like that's wrong. Like well, Benicula's guess, bad guy is not like a fucking an alien. Like well, I guess the antithesis of that is supposed to be like they, you know these people these kids and creatures with like the ability to naturally shapeshift into things that they want via their imagination or whatever um and but uh, the, in contrast their enemies are uh, creatures that forcefully take the forms of like hosts as opposed to like having like the ability to shapeshift naturally into like, yeah, whatever they want but when the kids were turning into animals they weren't like taking another animal's consciousness they were just becoming a brand they, new animal that they were yeah kind of they did have to base it off of an actual animal sure but they weren't like yeah. they weren't a, they weren't uh, claiming they weren't like body snatching it yeah. and then like forcing it to be a zombie yeah, that's, to their will that's why it's different that's why it's the opposite but like their opposite should be like the evil like just the bad kids who like turn into like other animals and who fight them not like something they can like because like if they control the animorphs like i don't know then they're just controlling what, what's the fear here with the zorg the, 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 i think it's the yerg I the think. yerg so only the animorphs know about them because yeah. why yeah, because like they're fighting them. Like, the, but how did they? How did how did they reveal themselves to just the animorphs? It's not like becoming a tiger makes you like so much more aware of the earworms that are going yeah. around stealing people's consciousnesses. Yeah. You mean how did how did the how did the animorphs like spot them? Yeah, how did the animorphs know about the earworms? I forgot. I think it's just like like they they act weird. They have like like weird like attributes and like habits. 
that they're able to like kind of like piece together i forgot exactly like how, how they i don't think it's i don't think there's any like hard like visual actually cue. this just goes back to our first thing which is like the world building but yeah. like so save that for the animorphs discussion back to the no sorry i was just saying but back to the animorphs uh <laughs> discussion which is now happening um wait do they all know each other the animorphs or are they all singular or standalone? yeah they're all friends yeah how many are there like seven i think of them okay and they turn into different animals do any of them ever get that awkward thing where they both turn, <laughs> they both turn into like dogs and they're like oh it's like wearing the same dress at a party <laughs> like that no. very relatable content right now wearing the same dress to a fucking ball i don't think so um so there's not two dogs i don't think they, or they do i don't think they care they don't care i don't think they care if they both they're not like you're stealing my shit they like, look, both look like dogs. i'm sorry if this is not a kirsten podcast <laughs> is this a kirsten podcast <laughs> sure whatever <laughs> um I think I have more ideas for a game. Okay. But I, I'm i trying to think of... Because I come up with games all the time in my head. <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to think of one right now and it's eluding me. I do like playing something... Like I know this is Parker and uh, and Mara's thing. But I do like doing something with the uh, letterbox reviews. Yeah. Like I think there's a really creative way for us to like play with the idea of letterbox um because it's so funny it's so good letterbox is like the best place to troll people and it naturally fits into our love of movies and uh stuff like that or maybe not a game maybe it's just sort of like how did this get made how they always read reviews five star reviews of like movies that suck um it could be something like that or like we read we just find like accounts that do like silly or like really random reviews people really have created art i think on letterbox and it's something that i strive to do even though I haven't updated it in months. So just a, where we read letterbox reviews? Or we come up with like, like ways to write letterbox reviews. Like we find we find funny ways to like review a movie. Like review it in the most, like if, if you come at, at a movie at a certain angle. Like The Sixth Sense is a movie about like a, you know, um, a, you know, a, uh, let's say, okay, Sixth Sense is a bad idea. But how about The Visit? So The Visit is a movie, The Village. I'm going with him like <laughs> now the village is a movie about like this poor uh, schmuck who works you know if you just review it and you're saying okay so this poor guy he works at this like nature preserve and he's constantly like just dealing with like all these rules and restrictions and arbitrary stuff and he's gotten a lot of crap from his boss and then like one day he discovers a you know a blind hot chick who's like come from over the wall and he's got to get her medicine and he's like risking his life he's risking his career and he's got this sick kid back home and it's just you know trying to describe a movie by using an arbitrary characters yeah. in world stuff or like describing um i think there is a game called like describing a movie the worst way possible yeah right that already yeah. exists i think so you know like like the movie up is about uh well i've never really seen up that hard the movie toy story <laughs> is about sid going to therapy like yeah. this boy who's been traumatized going to therapy because his dolls all came to life one day yeah <laughs> i'm gonna try to see if i can find what i'm talking okay, about okay you do that well, i'm gonna keep reading the last couple of these things so i got the black lodge oh wait, wait, wait. i thought we were, went off a different game now we're we oh. still on that okay I'm i like in the last few the black lodge would be hard because we don't know how that rules work yeah uh that's why we get let's just get weird uh we got uh perfection which is the town from tremors with some of the tremors in there. see that's good. so they come with the graboids yeah see i feel like that's that's good i like that um I think if you pick locations that are by definition non supernatural, but you're right, like have supernatural things inside of them, then they have to include the supernatural things. But I think if it's going to be like, um, what was that movie? God, what was that movie? Belko, the Belko experiment. Yeah, the Belko experiment. Yeah. Or Cube. Like <laughs> yeah, it doesn't necessarily have. It doesn't necessarily have to have the people from Cube in there. I just yeah. think like the Cube itself is. In- yeah. Yeah, if, I mean, if this, if the environment itself is like dynamic enough, like it could just be that. Like Cube is like just a dynamic environment. Yeah, you don't need to have Quentin there seeing yeah, people like an X ray. Like, yeah, looking through you like an X ray. Yeah. Um, time trap. The time trap cave. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we could just have old. <laughs> the same thing. The, the beach. Oh no, wait, they're different. They're different. Old works exactly kind of the opposite yeah. as time trap. Yeah, I, okay. I think I would prefer to keep to, to use the beach from old. <laughs> I think I prefer the, the freaking world from Time Trap is something that we explore as like, uh, this is like the world building one. Like, <laughs> let's come up with the concepts of like here. I also like the idea of like, we just, we, there's the show where we really go hard on trying to understand the world building or like the bigger world. And then there should be a show where we just like take one silly IP or one silly movie and we create like the extended universe around it. Yeah. Like we, we come up with like all the reasons and stuff. Like Predestination isn't a silly movie, but like coming yeah. up with the lore 
of predestination or like the Justin P. Henson or J- Justin and Aaron uh, P. Moore and B. Henson. Yeah. You know, Moorhead and B. Henson. Sorry. <laughs> I'm very bad at their names and knowing which one goes which. Uh, so it's Aaron Moorhead and Justin B. Henson. It's yeah. like their whole worlds of synchronic and the endless and uh, resolution. Yeah. That's I, a big one. Cause like they obviously have like a lot of going on in that stuff. Well, the two of them are related and the synchronic's not related. Yeah. Like that's a different world. But even so, like those first two films like have so much going on in them. Yeah. And I think they, they said that they, I mean, I just, but that's what I really respect about them is like, they've created a whole world. They're only showing you like a little piece of like one part of the supernatural element of like, in each movie yeah. but there's clearly like some bigger thing that they've mapped out that's going on that we might not ever see but like trying to take stabs at what it could be there's obviously a entity there's an entity there's like that is gigantic and sort of godlike um oh hey hey what's up sorry the what dog, about he has licking problems yes licking problems yes queen what about a show where the doggies pitch us their their ideas about what we do all day. But that's not him hitting the animal, by the way. <laughs> and I'm like waving my thing at her so she'll stop. With my headphones. I do like the games we play on Live in the Dark. And I feel like some of them are games that I would have liked to have extended more. Yeah. So I think we can take some of those. Like, what would it look like to have this director direct this film? Or like this director do a show on this subject? Like, what if like, you know, you know when Damon Lindelof got watchman ip it was kind of a big deal to have the lost guy take on such a big ip yeah but like you know what if we gave Zack snyder masters of the universe and or she-ra because uh, everyone's backlash <laughs> what would Zack snyder she-ra look like and how much would i hate it because it's sucker punch <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly um let's try to give you know because i am just so into uh, world creators i am i've always been really into it especially when it comes to tv so like let's give this showrunner this this very big IP and how would he turn it into this one thing? Yeah. Let's give John Patrick Shanley. Let's give him the devil's rejects. <laughs> See what he does with it. I feel like I know where this movie's going immediately. It's a nun. So the, the family from uh, devil's Re- by the way, house of a thousand corpses need to be on there. If it's not already. Uh, yes. And I also think that um, as much as I hate these movies, the fear street, Freaking! Uh, you have to add the Fear Street Mall I in guess. there. Yeah, can, they, can it be what? TV? Is stuff? it gonna be ye- the mall or yield like village? Doesn't matter. Same place, same physical <laughs> location. Because underneath it is where the thing is, right? Yeah. What about uh, the the apartment complex from Rosemary's Baby? Yeah, with what like cultists in it? Yeah, with the really, and also they had like a the space, the ritual space. Yeah. Um. What about the Warrens' house? Yeah, yeah, their house full of like, like creepy objects. Creepy, like, oh my conf- god! Like, conf- confiscated like. What were we objects. saying last night that we really liked that because it was like their ver- the, it was a version of them having what we were saying because they had like a bunch of objects in their house. So it was kind of like them having, uh, like I don't know. I, I don't forgot. think I don't think we're having this conversation. Who else would? I- oh, Adam, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it was Adam Collins. Yeah. Um. I think like the yeah the Warrens' house, which is basically like cabin in the woods, but for oh no we were saying we were saying it's like needful things like the Warrens' house is basically the thing from Needful Things, where it's like every object is, you know, avarice. Oh no, what about something pet related? I like the animorph stuff because I like playing around with the idea of people who turn into animals or animals being people. Well, that we can just like talk about for the our world discussion. Well, I also just like the idea of us coming up with our own version of Pokemon, <laughs> or like uh, like this Meta Zoo game that I want to get into, but I'm yeah. scared to crack open because, uh, you know, the box prices are just going up. Um, let's see, do we have any more? Idea? What is the stuff I'm constantly talking about that you're like, this would be so funny, as a show, baby. In general, yeah. like I mean, I, we, what we, kind of stuff do I just constantly harp on? We, 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 we're not necessarily talking about like you know games or fun ideas, but we're just talking about like whatever. Like I do love talking to you. Maybe we just uh, talk guys. About- this is not going to be a podcast. We're going to release this as is, and so if you want to subscribe to more content of what it feels like to just hang out with us, yeah, we're about an hour and ten minutes in. So oh like, my god, we, no way! Maybe we can start wrapping up. Uh, oh god, oh god. So did I <laughs> did I good? podcast i do a good job anyways that's uh our ideas uh yeah i think we're probably gonna have like maybe like 
occasionally we'll have like stream of consciousness podcast. It could be like whatever's happening. I think that's what this was. It could be like whatever's happening in the day. It could be like, you know, whatever we were talking about earlier that day and like just, you know, stuff's on our mind. Yeah. And like let it, let it flow. But then, yeah, I do kind of want to do like these uh, game stuff like we described. So, you know, if like let us know, like if you're reading this, like give us comments or wherever we're going to put this. Um, uh, DM us, not DM us, like uh, at us at uh, Twitter, like mm-hmm. to let us know like what you think. Uh, if, if you, you want a whole episode about what I think Bo Burnham's thinking about on any given day, um, I'm willing to do that. Yeah, we'll do probably like movie reviews, like I uh, too. Oh, what about songs that I make up? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like, make up good songs. You like my songs. You do make up great songs. Yeah. What is the song I made up today? Uh, I mean, I can't remember. There's like a okay. lot. There's a lot. Wow. Yeah. Okay. You're right. <laughs> I can tell you guys about my troubles. I can use this as like a therapy session. Okay. I love this, and you'll pay for it eventually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so guys this is going to be a patreon perk but this episode has been free yeah so, so if you're this- listening to this like you know we're going to try to build this out we'll probably put out more stuff eventually but like the this probably will, uh, as we're building this and experimenting with like how it sounds and how it'll be structured i think it will exist on uh video juice patreon i also think yeah i mean the, when i think about models of podcasts that i really like it's like some of the episodes are behind patreon walls but some of them are free on and on apple Podcasts because that's how you get people to like know about you that are not yeah. necessarily in your circle yeah yeah we'll figure it out if anyone has any production uh, or like marketing or like whatever can draw pictures <laughs> we'll we'll we want to make this into a big thing me and eric uh are people that are really invested in community and we're really invested in knowing what you guys think and we really like playing we really like games uh so i think there's a lot of room for you know audiences to listen to us talk without you being able to talk back finally but then also no giving us your opinions and and participating and telling us what you think about it and how you'd like it to grow and evolve because this is not a static medium unlike shitty movies (laughs) sorry for cursing we can evolve based on criticism and adapt we can grow stronger we can become content candy llc (laughs) Yeah, well, somehow figure out a way to work in content candy because it's a really great name. It's a really great name. I just think you just, you know what, Drew? Shut your mouth and let the podcast end here. Yeah. Eric, where can people find you or is that not a thing here? Yeah, I'll show you that real quick. Just, you know, since we're first day, first episode or something, uh, you can find me at Nerd Chronic across all social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff. Also, editing from the movie Jerry Schmodown. Um, also, doing a video chronic pop culture quiz with the uh, video drew yeah this is really fun i can't like i can't believe we've been doing this for so long and like it's getting it's i don't know it's like getting so it's already so good and like i just love that we're consistent with it it's like i've never been really consistent in my life and it's just a really good thing so i don't know when this episode is coming out i can't promise you what's going to happen but if you haven't already subscribed to our patreon that's where you can go and request for quizzes. You can find out the scheduling. You don't even have to be a member to yeah. or subscribe. If there's a new tier, you can request a specific movie review. Yes, you can request a specific movie review for me. Or you can have me compare and contrast two movies. Like, I will do whatever. Mm-hmm. It's a one-time benefit. But, uh, like, if you want me to compare Space Jam with another movie and give you my things while I'm playing with Pokemon. And by playing, I mean just organizing them terribly. Uh, I will do that. It will have to be released on my public channel, but it can be a sponsored episode by you for you. Yes. Um, I also do Live in the Dark. I also do a bunch of other shows. But really, guys, patreon.com backslash video drew. Look out for Content Candy LLC in the near future. And this has been the podcast, the premiere episode of, let's just come up with the name right now, the Video Chronic Fun Hour. <laughs> Bauer, the Video Chronic 4 no, that's not how it goes. Let's let's end on a high note. The the chronic video, chronic Drew, chronic Drew. Bye.